Beauty! My name is Ko Kronikan and today I'm playing the Assassin's Creed 3 multiplayer and doing an exclusive post view review on the multiplayer. Let's jump right in! The Assassin's Creed 3 multiplayer is very extensive and unique, and more developed, polished than in the Brotherhood or Revelations. This has a unique gameplay which you won't find in other games. You can clearly see that they've spent more time testing the multiplayer than in the previous two titles, which is a really positive point for Ubisoft. The multiplayer has player progression like the abilities, leveling and tons of detailed character customization. You unlock the abilities by leveling and using Absurgo points, which are actually the currency in a multiplayer, which you acquire by participating in matches and playing good or finishing first. For the first time in the multiplayer, all the abilities are craftable in a higher level. You can also customize your ability sets. I will give you a tip here, guys. There are no such things as the best abilities, but there are best suited abilities for specific game modes. For example, when you're hiding in the Manhunt game mode, you use Disguise and Smoke Bomb to stun your pursuers. And when you're a Hunter, then you just use other better suited abilities. Basically, it's always better to use more than one set of abilities in one single session. The leveling. At the beginning, you level pretty rapidly as expected, but there is just something off in the matchmaking system. I mean, come on! When I'm level 22, you match me up against a player that has level 5 prestige? It's just not fair because that guy has access to more better abilities than I do. Plus, he has a lot more experience than I do. By the way, prestige levels are the levels that come after you reach level 50. And there are 100 prestige levels. But those are just for fun because you don't actually unlock anything useful when you level up. It just keeps you going after you got to level 50. Character Customization Oh boy, this is appreciated. You don't like how the character looks? Change his or her appearance from the top to bottom. Your character customization is so detailed that you can even change clothing styles, clothing pieces if you don't like the pre-built styles. The face, war paint or makeup, even her high profile and silent weapons, stun move, taunt move and ground finishing move. There is even an emblem that is displayed on your character in the sessions that you can customize. Another thing I like about the multiplayer is that it's not pay to win. Of course there are some microtransactions that allows you to pay with money and buy some bundles that give you abilities faster than you can actually unlock them by leveling, which is quite irritating to see. But overall, it won't affect the gameplay or your awesome experience in the multiplayer. It's still every bit as enjoyable. There are tons of modes in the multiplayer. There are modes when everyone is for themselves. Basically a free-for-all. The first of which is the Wanted. It's a classic play mode where you just have to kill your assigned target shown by a compass which helps you determinate how close you are to your target and that he is in your line of sight or not. In the meantime, you are being hunted as well by another player. The Deathmatch is the mode when you get assigned a target and a portrait of the target and an indicator if they are in your line of sight. You just know how they look and that's all. It's basically the same as the Wanted but there is no telling how close you are to your target. The Assassinate. The Assassinate is the mode when you have to identify a player before he identifies you and lock on him and kill him. Here you don't get assigned to a target. You can kill any player, you just have to be sure that they are players. There are also modes when you have to work as a team like the Manhunt, where you play as a team of 4 players against another team of 4 players. And all the players from the teams look alike. There are two sessions in this mode. In one of the sessions, you will be the Hunter team, and in the other one, you will be the Hunted. So you have to find, identify and kill the enemy team players, when you are the Hunters. You also have the Compass here to help you from the Wanted game mode. And when you are the Hunted, you just have to hide and not die. And of course, stun the enemy if possible. There is the Artifact Assault mode, which basically is a capture the flag mode without getting killed. The thing here is that you can actually kill the enemy team players if they are in your base. If you are in there, you can't kill them, just stun them if you're really lucky. 
And there is a domination mode, where you just have to stay on the objective to capture it and then defend it. Boring, if you ask me. This mode worked better off for shooters, I guess. And there is also the Wolfpack game mode, which is actually the first ever Kobe game mode in the Assassin's Creed game franchise. Where you have to work as a team and kill assigned AIs in the time given. If you do, you get to the next sequence. And there are 25 sequences, basically 25 waves you have to complete. But it's freaking hard, man, because you just have to be efficient as a team to succeed. I honestly never got above sequence 20, because you have to complete the optional requirements as well, and you have a smaller and smaller time window to execute them. Anyway, it's quite enjoyable and fun for the first few times, because it gives you a pretty good challenge. There is just one big issue with all the team obje objective game modes and with the co-op wolfpack mode. It completely lacks a chat. Please Ubisoft, fix this, I can't communicate with my teammates and we can't synchronize our kills because we can't talk to each other. Of course there is the voice chat, but nobody uses that. We just need a simple chat, man, so we can explain to the fucking noobs how to make their kills in the Wolfpack game mode to be more efficient and help the team. Please, please, just please Ubisoft, is it so hard? There is also a leaderboard where you can check out where you stand on the overall ranking of all the players in the game. There are also seasons, for example this season was pretty alive and full of players because the game was for free in December 2016. Because Ubisoft had their 30th birthday and they had huge giveaways. Actually that's, that's when I got the game as well, so I can say I'm a little new to it, but I'm pro with it because there is a small mechanic that shows how good is a player performance compared to his current level. And if you have three lines like this, it means that you play very good for your current level. There are also two line ranks, one line rank, half a line rank, and DM3 red rank, which you begin with. Also, I am on the 1424th place on the, on the leather board. From the total of 150,000 players, which basically means I'm in the top 2% already at level 25. But if you consider that only a smaller portion of the players are actually active and playing the game, then I'm just only in the top 10% or so. But still, it's pretty good for my level. I'm sure that I will get higher up because you receive your rank based on your current level. Which is fucking fair if you ask me. And I always play good compared to my level. So basically, when I hit level 50, I will be in the top 1% for sure, if I keep this performance up. The mechanics. There is this little mechanic called the lock system that allows you to lock on your target and don't kill other players or uh, other civilians, only the one that you are locked on. Also, and also stay locked to your target for amount of time, even if you lose sight of them for a brief time. There is also the stun mechanic which basically allows you to stun your pursuers if you ad identify them and take them by surprise. Or just use smoke bomb on them and then you can be sure to stun them. Or just let them miss you and kill a civilian and then you can stun them. As in the previous game, stunning your pursuer is pretty hard because you basically have to press the click before then the killer does. If you just press it exactly in the same time, you will just have a contested kill. Because he has the advantage, and the hunter or the pursuer will always have the advantage. So it's pretty hard to surprise and stun your pursuer once he locked on you. Actually, it's pretty fucking impossible. Whatever. There is also the chase mechanic, which is basically the same. If your pursuer triggers a chase and his detection meter goes empty, you can run from him, break the line of sight and then hide. If you do this with success, and he didn't catch you, then you get the same amount of points as for a basic kill. But more experienced players are careful not to trigger a chase, because it's absolutely not rewarding for the pursuer. And of course, the chase target can also use the chase breakers, which are fucking useful by the way. As in previous games, your performance is measured in the points which you get from killing an enemy while your detection meter is at incognito, silent or discreet. 
If it goes below this creed, then you appear red for your target. And if it runs empty, as mentioned before, you trigger a chase. And then you will get very few points for your kill. Basically, the more filled your detection meter is, the more points you get. You also get bonus points for ambush kills, aerial kills and other variety kills. You also get points from stunning your pursuer, for escaping a, and for escaping a chase, and if you kick your target in the nuts while he is already laying dead on the ground because the other guy killed him faster than you did. There is also the whisper mechanic to which you actually have to listen to, and it indicates that your pursuer is close by, so you have to be on your toes when you hear the whispers. As a conclusion, the multiplayer of the Assassin's Creed 3 is well developed and polished. I'm sure as hell you won't find bugs here. Although there are a little things that piss me off in the mechanics, but I'm pretty sure they can be overlooked because of the amazing competitive multiplayer and awesome game modes. But the mechanic and overall gameplay feels pretty much the same as in the Brotherhood and the Revelations multiplayer. So maybe this is why I won't play until I hit level 50 because I just already played a similar multiplayer game until I get level 50, and that was the Brotherhood's multiplayer. And this is the main reason, maybe, why people get bored of it pretty quickly, I think. At least the people who played the other multiplayers as well. But one thing is for sure, I am to finish this season, which ends on 10th of February 2017, in the top 2% of the players. Anyway, thanks for watching, if it helped you, or you found what you were looking for, then please share this video so it might, might help others as well. If not, then just give it a like anyway. <laughs> if I missed anything, then you just please let me know in the comment section down below, and for more videos, subscribe to my channel. Also, check out this video. Have fun with this multiplayer while there are still people playing it. Enjoy. Hoodie doody!